Many of you guys know that I'm a very proud dad to a daughter that was born three months ago. She is without a doubt the best thing that's ever happened to me and I have zero issues spending a ton of time helping her grow up, nurture and develop her and just being her dad in general. However, obviously that amount of time really cuts into hobbies like brewing and YouTube. The goal of this video is to give you guys options on how to cut down the amount of time invested in brewing or just how to make it more manageable for a busy life. Whether you have a brand new kid at home like me or something else is eating up all your time, I think these are gonna be valuable tips for you. But really the big one I think is gonna be at the very end of the video and that's especially relevant for those of us who are brand new parents. So stick around for that. The first technique is to shorten parts of the brewing process. The things that are easiest to shorten really are the mash and the boil. Most styles of beer don't really need a 60 or even a 90 minute mash. Many of them, in fact, are actually entirely possible to be brewed with a 30 minute mash. In fact, many people may be able to get away with as short of a mash as 15 minutes. It depends on how much you actually care about efficiency. If you don't really care about efficiency and you're just trying to get some beer in the fermenter, you can mash for a very short period of time and still get a reasonable OG at 50 or 60% efficiency. The next place you can save some time is by skipping the sparge step. This is something I actually do already. Because my system really is designed for full volume mashes, I don't even need the sparge most of the time. I hit a 75% brew house efficiency relatively consistently with a 60 minute mash and no sparge. So if I add eight gallons of strike water to my system, I know that I'm generally gonna get the right volume at the very end of the process with the original gravity that my brewing software is able to calculate for me. If you still want to sparge to get the best efficiency possible and to dial in your flavors, then, you know, more power to you for that, but it's not necessary every single time you brew. Not sparging alone should save you about half an hour to an hour, depending on how your system is set up. And the next place you can save some time is honestly with a boil. 30 minute boils are becoming more and more popular, especially if you're brewing a style that doesn't really have bittering hops in it, something like a hazy IPA. I've brewed tons of hazy IPAs that have zero IBUs in them, technically on paper, because I throw all my hops into the world pool or a dry hop with them. Um, you generally aren't going to see bittering additions in these beers. And honestly, a 30 minute boil is way more than sufficient to get rid of all the DMS in your wort. If you take your standard brew day with a 60 minute mash, a sparge and a 60 minute boil, you can cut that down by an hour and a half by getting a 30 minute mash, a 30 minute boil and eliminating the sparge step. On the cold side, one thing you can do to speed up your process is either do a no chill or just a very efficient, very fast chill. Basically, if you have the ability to chill your wort in a single pass through your chiller or very, very quickly with a very high powered immersion chiller, um, and that will save you a lot of time on your brew day. Or you could do a no chill where you just simply don't chill your wort um, and have that go into the fermenter. For the sake of the beer's flavor, it's not a method I recommend doing necessarily. I believe that will give you extended summarization of hops and therefore more bitterness um, in the final beer if you do it that way. Plus, I'm not a huge fan of putting really hot work in plastic, even though I know the plastic is rated for that sort of thing. Just not a thing I'm a big fan of personally, but if that's your option, then that's certainly something to save some time because you can just put it in the hot cube and walk away. The next thing you can do to save some time is actually to switch up your brewing method if you're doing all grain and actually go back towards partial mash or even fully extract based brewing. These methods are obviously a lot quicker because you don't have to sit through the whole mashing process. That being said, not for everybody. If you're a dedicated all grain brewer, this is not gonna be an option for you, um, but it is certainly a way to save some time. Next thing you can do to cut down on your process is uh, actually to use fike yeast. Not only will they shorten the amount of time that you have the beer in the fermenter because it ferments in three to five days, uh, but also you generally will never need to make a starter for this beer. For most ale yeast, you do have to really pay attention to how much you're throwing in um, in order to make sure that you're pitching enough yeast, even with dry yeast. Kvike, on the other hand, is really, really good at fermenting high gravity beers with a actually much, much lower pitch rate than your standard brewer's yeast. So what I'm getting at here is that not only will Kvike save you time in the overall fermentation process, but it's also going to eliminate the need to think ahead to get a starter going a couple days before fermentation and all of that sort of stuff. So these sorts of things all eat up your time and uh, by not having to worry about that ahead of schedule, you're saving a little time there as well. And the next way you can save some time is actually by fermenting your beer under pressure. Nine times out of 10, the reason why people ferment under pressure is so that they can ferment a standard lager or another beer that requires a lower fermentation temperature at room temperature or higher. Uh, when you don't have dedicated temperature control, 
Pressure fermentation is certainly a good way to get around that problem. But the reason why I'm putting it in this video is because what you can do with pressure fermentation is you can actually carbonate your beer during the actual fermentation process. It uses the CO2 that yeast produces, captures it, and actually dissolves it back into the beer when you ferment at around 10 to 15 PSI. What this means is that you can transfer a fully carbonated, fully fermented beer directly from the fermenter into a keg with a pressure transfer and have that beer be ready to serve immediately. You can also do this with bottles if you have the right kind of counter pressure bottle filler. All this means is that you're not gonna be waiting a couple weeks for your beers to actually carbonate and be ready to serve. You also don't need to worry about forced carbonating your beer afterwards and paying attention to that. Another way to save some time is to avoid brewing styles that require clarity, if that's something you really care about. A lot of people don't care about the appearance of the beer, so this may not apply to you, but um, if you focus on hazy styles like hazy IPAs, like Hefeweizens, like that sort of thing, um, and you don't need to worry too much about the actual visual uh, conditioning of the beer, then more power to you because then you can just toss this hazy carbonated beer directly into your kegerator and be ready to go right away. And then the final things that have been saving me a ton of time and actually have been honestly saving my sanity as a parent have been splitting up the brew day into chunks and overnight mashing. So firstly, splitting the brew day up into chunks. What I mean by that specifically is splitting the brew day into three days. So the first day, is all about prepping the ingredients. For me as a content creator, a lot of time is actually occupied by filming the ingredients, by getting those tight in macro shots um, that I think are really enjoyable for people here. But that takes a lot of time to set up and film. So that's happening on day one, but also just prepping the ingredients, getting the water collected, getting the water salts measured out and added into the water, getting the grain measured out and milled out, prepping sanitizer, cleaning the system, rinsing it all off, getting it ready to go. Twice now on day one, I've actually mashed in once it's all ready and done an overnight mash so that on day two I'm ready to brew. Sometimes on day two I'll do the mash in the morning as well but really that overnight mash method has saved me so much time um, and just honestly has produced just as good of a beer uh, especially if you keep that consistent temperature across the board. Um, it just produces just as good of a beer as a regular 60 minute mash. Day two is the brew day though we could do the mash sometimes we'll do the boil We'll do the chill, transfer into the fermenter, pitch the yeast, get it all set up. I flush out the pump, I flush out the chiller, I do a little bit of preliminary cleaning, but then I walk away. And day three is when I do all my cleaning and get everything ready for the next brew. The surfaces are gonna be a bit more tough to clean if you do let them sit overnight, just keeping that in mind. But what this does is it allows me to only invest two to three hours each day in the actual brewing process instead of six or seven hours overall. Uh, and that's an absolute game changer. So now I'm not necessarily saving time on the brew day with any particular step, but what I am doing is allowing myself to only invest a smaller amount of time each day in the brewing process and still get a really good solid beer quality out of the process instead of cutting corners elsewhere. Sometimes that means that I can actually complete one of these chunks of the process while my baby is taking a nap. Um, and that's awesome to be able to just get everything done like that. Even if you don't have a kid at home, this is certainly a great way to get brewing done without a lot of time investment. You don't have to mash overnight either. You can also set up your mash in the morning, let it go throughout the day, and then finish it up at night. So if you're an early riser, that means you can mash in, go to work, come back from work, and finish your brew day. So whether or not you're a busy parent like me, or you got something else eating up a lot of your time, let me know if these tips were useful to you. And also, if there is something that I did not mention here that you used to save some time, please, please, please drop it in the comment section down below. And if you're watching this video, look at the comments because they could save you some time as well. As usual, guys, if this video was useful, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got plenty of other videos like this one as well as lots of brewing videos on this channel. And so if it's your first time here, please check those videos out as well and subscribe while you're at it. If you want to support the channel, please consider picking up a t-shirt. You can get this design as well as many others in my merchandise store, which is down in the description box. I also have a Patreon, and I would like to thank my Patreon supporters for their continued support. You guys are helping me get production upgrades like the better lighting setup we got going on right now, that's all due to you guys. So thank you very much for your support. If that's not your thing, there's also channel memberships and there's the super thanks button. If you want to hit either of those things, they help me out quite a bit as well. It's a much easier way to do it. If you're curious about my brewing equipment or my channel production equipment or any of that stuff that's available on Amazon, I have an Amazon store in the description box as well where you can find a lot of the recommended stuff that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. If you want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also active on Instagram and Facebook as the apartment brewer, so please check those 
those links out for some continued content outside of YouTube. You get to see what's coming to the channel in the near future. And last but certainly not least, guys, if you're still here, if you're still watching, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. I put a lot of work into these things and it means a lot when people watch the whole thing. So this one goes out to you guys and I'll catch you in the next one. So until then, cheers.